Hey you guys, it's Carolyn from Homesteading Family and here I am in my cottage garden. Look at the hollyhocks have gotten so tall and everything else is growing. So I wanted to show you an updated tour of how the cottage garden is growing. All right, here we are right at the entrance to the cottage garden. It's about six o'clock in the morning right now, so it's really early. And you can see we have got a lot going on here. Doesn't this look so good? It's grown up so much since where we started uh, just a few months ago. This was just grass a few months ago. So let's take a look and see what we've got growing here. All right, so we've got the arbor roses. I've got those big plants with the broad leaves in the back of the elecampane. That's a medicinal. Of course, some lavender. Let's see, there's an evening primrose and an anise hyssop. If you guys haven't ever tried anise hyssop, you should really try it. I love just uh, chewing on that, just plain, but it's got a lovely flavor. Uh, it's really good medicinally, but it's really good just as a flavoring agent. And of course, a holy basil there. Um, for those of you who tend to get tired, <laughs> run yourself into the ground like I have a tendency to do, holy basil is one of your best friends in the plant world. Let's see what we've got going on on this side. Let's see. Of course, yarrow. I would not have a medicinal garden without yarrow and hollyhocks growing up all the way around. Those are interchangeable with marshmallow, so you can use those um, for anything that you would need, something slippery, mucilaginous. Those are really handy. And then growing up the posts of the house there, we've got all those hops. Can you see all those beautiful hops flowers on them right now? They're just wonderful, and those are so good for sleep. Tucked back in here, we have valerian, and Ignatia, and of course these are all first year. I started these from seed this spring, if you remember down in the basement. So they're a little small, but they are just gonna go to town by next year. We harvest the roots of both of those primarily. And so we really want to put a lot in and get those roots strong. We want those really harvestable, good strong roots. This guy here is a Korean hyssop or a Korean mint. Um, and the term is used interchangeably a lot. And it, it's very similar to anise hyssop. It is uh, definitely in the mint family and has a very intriguing flavor. It is not minty at all, really. It's closer to that, uh, the anise hyssop. And I find that if you add any sort of vanilla to a drink made out of this stuff, it tastes very much like a I, like a root beer is the best way I could describe it. Of course, catnip. Gotta have catnip in a medicinal garden. It is just so good for all sorts of things from uh, achy tummies, gassy tummies, to restlessness. And when you have children, this is just a wonderful herb to have. Over here, the lemon balm's growing in. The bee balm or monarda back there is doing well. This is some cayenne pepper. Trying to put out some peppers, but I don't know if we're gonna get much before the end of the season. We'll see. It has been a cool season here and um, peppers and tomatoes have not been very happy. That monarda back there, also known as bee balm, that has the combined medicinal qualities of oregano and thyme. It is incredibly strong medicinally, but also very safe. It is a wonderful, wonderful herb. And you need to make sure you use it because it will take over a garden like most of the mints, which is why here in this garden, they're all planted pretty close together. They can fight it out amongst themselves. Spilanthes, that's the numbing plant. My little wood betony over here is trying, the calendula is trying to take it over. So I may have to cut back that calendula there, which is very happy and has been harvested many, many times already and is still just growing right away. Here's my little cafe table spot. I love this little spot. The hollyhocks are about to completely overtake it, but it is just such a nice spot to come out and have a cup of coffee or medicinal tea, of course. 
and the runner bean teepee turned into a runner bean tunnel. It got so heavy with these beautiful beans. Can you guys see these? Look at those guys. I'm letting these just completely mature and dry down for soup beans. I love the runner beans for soup beans. Okay, now we're kind of starting to move on to the more culinary sections as we get closer to the kitchen. Uh, you're gonna start seeing a lot more leeks, fennel, there's some nice pretty ferny fennel. A Little more bee balm. We've got multiplier onions back there that really multiplied, look at them. They're just crowded in there. I'm gonna have to divide those off before too long. On this side, we've got Thai basil, Look at those sunflowers, chamomile, thyme, oregano. Down at the end, there's a whole big patch of basil. Of course, I have flowers tucked in all the way around to make sure I've got good pollinators in here and just for cutting and, you know, just because I enjoy them. I love having them. And uh, the horseradish, pa horseradish patch is tucked back in there. There's some giant blue lobelia in there, too. That's going to take a little bit longer to really get going. It needs to really set those roots in before it's gonna get big and tall. Runner beans, tomatoes, all sorts of things kind of tucked against the edges there. Let's see, we've got savory down here, tarragon, sage. Ooh, and here is my first apothecary rose. If you guys have not smelled a damask rose before, oh, you have got to try it. You need to have one around. Just one of those flowers will scent an entire room. It is such an amazing uh, flower to have. And for medicinal purposes, it is the rose that you want. It is so good. He's not going to flower again probably till next spring. But this year, he is just really setting down his roots and spreading out. So I think next spring is going to be an amazing year for this rose. A little bit more basil. We just have heavily harvested that. So he's looking a little weak. Okay, now here we come right to the kitchen steps. Now, right now I have those kitchen steps blocked off to keep the dogs and the little children out until the um, garden gets a little bit stronger, but it won't be long and those will come down so that the little guys can come down and take advantage of their grazing garden. Now, I like having things that the children can come out and just grab as a snack. And if you can see this right here, this is a Mexican kirk, um, gherkin, sour gherkin. They're like little tiny cherry cucumbers. I love these things. Their flavor is wonderful and they're really plentiful and they're so cute. They look like tiny little watermelons and there are tons of them on here. So just another week and we are going to have a bunch of them. Then right back here is the current tomato. And these things just stay so tiny. They're so cute for popping right in your mouth. The little guys love to come out and just pick them off. I also have the cherry peppers. Here's a little sweet cherry pepper in here. And all of these things are just for the little people to be able to come out and eat whenever they want. Okay. Okay, so now we're moving on to the next area, which has a lot of perennial vegetable greens, a few medicinals. This one right here is so lovely. This is a cultivated purslane. A lot of times you've got purslane as a weed in the garden. Um, this is the cultivated kind, so it's more upright and the leaves are larger very high in omegas, omega-3 specifically. Um, it is kind of a succulent, so it's a little bit of an interesting texture, but it's very nice and crisp. It makes just a lovely salad. We've got some perennial rocket back there and Caucasian mountain spinach. And look at that borage plant. Wow, it just went wild. It is so happy. Chervil, so good, and soft cheeses, absolutely delicious. And then I've got my little area over here for cut flower garden. This is so that I never have to feel guilty about cutting these flowers and bringing them into the house. 
so many times when I have my flowers blooming out in the garden I just want to leave them there but then I want to have them in the house too so this way I can have my cake and eat it too a few more over here and then I've got some more perennial greens on this side I've got Good King Henry, which is like a perennial spinach. So this year I'm just really letting it get roots down. And um, next year it will be ready first thing in the spring to eat. Right behind it, those kind of tallish plants are lovage. Another really good perennial vegetable and herb. Uh, it's even got some medicinal qualities. And, oh, Bob came to visit. Morning, Bob. Bob the cat. Okay, and right there, we have the sorrel. The French sorrel. It, this is so good. There we go. There's Bob. Um, it's like a lemon spinach. And again, it's a perennial, so it'll be up first thing in the spring. And we have just a mass of different tomatoes, runner beans, flowers, all tucked in here. Some more hollyhocks, lupin, and a little bit more cut flower space right over here with a bunch of asters just about to bloom. Some um, more cosmos and zinnias tucked in. And let's see, I think that that is about to kind of wrap it up. I've got my lemon tree and my lime tree that will have to come in in the winter tucked over there by the stairs and a mandarin tree on the left and some pots of rosemary up on the porch and those will all have to come in here in the winter time it just gets way too cold all right guys there you have it three and a half months ago this was just grass it was just sod that's all that was here it was a little front lawn so i know that you can turn a little piece of grass into something amazing and it doesn't take that long thanks for joining me guys you guys take care bye bye